from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Sportsline. Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us on this Tuesday night on News Channel 5 Plus. Lots of stuff to get to tonight. It has been a busy week, that is for sure. We can talk Titans tonight as they get set for the second half of the season. Meaningful football for the first time in a long time. The last time that they were at 500 or better eight weeks into the season was 2011 when they're actually 4-3 and three at this point of the year. So the Titans with the opportunity to play some meaningful games and make a playoff push in the second half of the year. We'll talk more about that throughout the course of the night. Also, college football, the first college football playoff rankings out today. Alabama, no surprise, number one. Number two and three, eh, you might be able to complain or debate the order with Clemson two and then Michigan at number three. Really not much of debate about those two teams being two and three, though, whatever the order. And, of course, they would play each other eventually anyway in a semifinal game, so not too big of a difference there. The surprise, though, comes at number four, where Texas A&M, with a loss out of the SEC West, currently sits at number four in that final playoff spot. Ahead of unbeaten Washington, who sits at 8-0 and on top of the Pac-12 at the moment. That one made several people look back and say, ooh, okay, that's a bit of a surprise. Washington is fifth, Ohio State is sixth, Louisville seventh. All three of those teams seem to have a real shot if they can win out down the stretch and maybe get a little bit of help to be really involved there. You get much beyond those three, and you're going to need a lot to happen for a Wisconsin or a Nebraska or a Florida, somebody like that to move up into the mix. Auburn, although the one thing about Auburn is they have the opportunity to play Alabama at the end of the regular season, and if they can win that and go on and win an SEC title perhaps, that certainly would get the Tigers into the equation. But anyway, interesting stuff on night one. From the college football playoff committee, I think everybody thought it was essentially a foregone conclusion. There would be Alabama, Clemson, Michigan, Washington in some order. And the fact that Texas A&M is in there right now with a loss and Washington is on the outside looking in, I think surprised some. Your thoughts on that tonight? Your thoughts on the Titans? 737-7767 is our number as always. We would welcome your insights and thoughts on the program here tonight. Other big story that happened yesterday in Knoxville. Jalen Hurd, the former Beach product, leading rusher for Tennessee for the third consecutive year, telling Butch Jones that he will transfer and leave Tennessee and look to play somewhere else, perhaps exploring the opportunity to be a tight end where he fits perhaps better in the NFL or has a chance to have a longer career in the NFL at that position. Hurd's absence certainly will be felt. Alvin Kamara still out with an injury. That means John Kelly is going to have to step up in a big way for Tennessee. We'll hear from Bitch Jones coming up on the program tonight. also want to get your thoughts. What does this mean? To me, it signals a little bit of a dumpster fire in Knoxville. I mean, if you think about it, Butch Jones is a Hail Mary completion at Georgia to win that game away from being on the hot seat. This team is 5-3 and three right now. Two of those are to teams that are in the top four, as we just mentioned, A&M and Alabama, but then a bad loss at South Carolina. If you throw in a loss to a Georgia team that doesn't look very good and you're 4-4 four and four right now, there would be some real questions about Butch Jones' job security in Knoxville. I don't think there necessarily is yet, but I think it's okay to ask some questions about it because this was supposed to be the team, and they haven't panned out that way. They've never started fast the entire season long. Dating back to Appalachian State, they have struggled out of the gate. And it's finally caught up with them the last few weeks. Certainly Saturday night at South Carolina, it caught up with them. South Carolina punched him in the face in the first half. And Tennessee, I don't know whether they just thought we can rally because we've done it all year, but on Saturday, they couldn't. And that's a real problem, real problem for Tennessee moving forward. And Butch Jones, how does he get this team back on track when in all likelihood, 
the SEC East title, chance at an SEC championship, chance to go to the playoff, all those things that were on the table early on for the Vols now appear to be out the window. How do you get this team to refocus? That's the challenge for Butch Jones. 737-7767, the number of your thoughts on the Tennessee situation as well. Vanderbilt, interesting. You look at them a few weeks ago after some of the losses that they had and you wondered where Derek Mason stood there, where this team fit in in the SEC race. Now all of a sudden they've won back-to-back -back games and they sit at 4-4 four and four and with an opportunity in front of them in the final month of the year to get to a bowl game for the first time in the Mason area. It won't be easy. They've got a trip to Auburn this weekend where they are 25-point underdogs. They've got a game against Ole Miss, Missouri, and, of course, that game against Tennessee at the end of the year. Going to have to win two, somehow, some way. The Commodores have to win two to get to six wins and get into a bowl game, but it's there. They have the opportunity in front of them now in the final month of the season and some momentum having won back-to-back -back games. World Series tonight as well. The Cubs jumping all over Tomlin and the Indians early on. It is 6-0 in Cleveland. The Cubs trying to force a Game 7 tomorrow night. We'll see if they can do it. We can take your thoughts on that series as well. It's been a fascinating and entertaining series. And I'll say this. If the Cubs win tonight, I think for the first time in the entire World Series and, and maybe the postseason, the pressure goes on Cleveland tomorrow night in Game 7. Because Cleveland had a 3-1 series lead. They have the home field advantage based off of the All-Star game. So Game 7 is in their park. I think the pressure goes on the Indians to start the night tomorrow. Now, pressure in baseball is only as good as your starting pitching, and the Indians have Corey Kluber available to pitch again on short rest tomorrow night, so that is certainly something that they can rely back on. But I think the pressure does. It shifts away from the Cubs and the historic nature of what they've tried to do all season long. Uh, that has weighed very heavily, I think, on a lot of their players throughout the postseason. It's been 108 years. It was 1908, the last time the Cubs won the World Series. And here they are on the doorstep. And I think throughout the postseason, when they have been as dominant as they were throughout the year, the only team in baseball to win 100-plus games, to go through the Giants, to go through the Dodgers, I think there was a lot of pressure on this team to live up to that and to break through and win the World Series. I think the Indians played the start of this series footloose and fancy free because nobody put the same pressure on them despite the fact they haven't won the title in 68 years. But now if they go up 3-1, had the chance to close it out in Chicago, Cubs win 3-2 in Game 5. If they lose tonight and they're down early, I think all of a sudden tomorrow night the pressure starts to mount on the Indians because it's the opportunity that you may have blown. The fact that you had that lead, you would be on your third chance to close out the series and win. And this time, if you don't, it's all over. I think for the first time tomorrow night, the pressure would be on the Indians and the Cubs would essentially be able to just show up and go play. Now, they'll still be pressured there because of 108 years. But I think it will be matched on the other side for the first time really in this series tomorrow night. Love to get your takes on these questions tonight. Your thoughts, the Titans, moving on to the second half of the year. Tennessee without Jalen Hurd. What can Butch Jones and the Vols do down the stretch of this season? Vanderbilt going to Auburn this weekend and into the final month. Do you see two wins on the schedule for the Commodores? 737-7767. And, of course, we can talk the World Series as well. Just getting started here tonight on Sportsline. Stay with us. Jump on into the program. We want to hear from you tonight. We'll get to Mike Malarkey, Butch Jones, some more analysis from our guy Jonathan Hutton as well from the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central on Sunday too. So stay with us. You're watching Sports Live here on News Channel 5 Plus.